Let's take a look at gra basic graphing on the class pad manager. Now I ordered this emulator and um, it's kind of vague on what I ordered. Uh, I didn't have a model on it um, and I got it and still didn't have a model on it. So I'm assuming this is a generic one to apply uh, applies to all the models where they're very similar. That's my guess anyway. Um, now the uh, class pad manager uh, you're probably starting out with a menu like this and we're going to take a look at uh, graphing our basic building blocks. So we're first going to look at y is equal to x. Now I know these are basic graphs, you probably know what they look like, but the idea is learn how to graph them on your graphing calculator. Then later on we're going to, um, in college algebra, you'll build uh, more complex uh, graphs um, using these basic building blocks merged together. Okay, we want to go into the graph and tab, and I'm assuming the interface here is a touch touch screen, um, or this is a mouse of some sort. Um, but when I try to do the down arrow here, it doesn't bring it up. Um, so I'm going to click uh, graph and tab, and you got your um, y equals up here, y1, y2, so forth, and then your graph down here. Now to graph x, we'll put an x and then we'll press EXE and that accepts it and then we we'll click the graph button right here and that'll put your graph down there and that would be our answer okay let's take a look at y is equal to x squared well right now my focus is right down here to Flip focus back to the Y1, Y2, you click this Y1, Y2 button, then I'll put the focus back up here. I can up arrow to highlight that, and there's a couple different ways you could do this. Uh, the easiest way, I think, is you to do any power on your calculator, you do the caret. So I'll do X, caret, 2, and then enter, or EXE, and then I'll push my graph button, and that gives me my graph. Now y is equal x to the third. This is uh, almost exactly like the one we just looked at, so but I'll go ahead and show it anyway. And if I flip back to y1, y2, and so forth, click on that button, I can up arrow and put in x caret 3. I do x caret 3 and then exe. And then click the graph, and that'll graph it down there. Now let me show a different way of doing that. Um, that's how you pl uh, apply any power: x to fourth, x to fifth, x to twentieth, whatever. Um, if I click y1, y2, I'm back up here. If I come up here. If I press clear, it clears out that line. You can press the keyboard, and you've got tabs here: math, ABC, CAT, 2D. If I choose 2D, then there's this uh, x with the power here. If I choose that. Then you can uh, come over here, put in your X, and um, then uh, right, ar right arrow and put in your 2, and then do a EXE, and that's also how you can put in X squared. I don't know, to me that seems kind of harder um, than X caret 2, but uh, that is there if you want it. And then I press my graph, and that gives me my graph. Let's take a look at graphing Y is equal to X to the 1 half. Now this shows how do you handle any fraction, one half, two thirds, whatever. The trick to it is to put parentheses around your exponent. So I'll plug this in and I'll put parentheses around the one half. So um, press my Y1, Y2 button to go back there, up arrow, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do X caret beginning parentheses. 1 divided by 2, and then closing parentheses, and then exe. It automatically changes it to square root of x. And now if I press my graph button, it gives me my graph. Now I'm kind of curious how it's going to handle like x to the 2 thirds, how it switches that. So let's, let's go over here just, just out of fun. 
Um, press my Y1, Y2 up arrow. Press clear to clear that out. I'll put in my X caret, beginning parentheses, 2 divided by 3, closing parentheses, and then EXE. Okay, that one it didn't change to a radical. Curious. Let me come up to Y1 again. I'll press clear. Let me do X to one third. So X caret, and then begin parentheses, 1 divided by 3, closing parentheses, and then EXE. I guess 1 half is the only one that's smart enough to actually recognize the radical on. But that's how you put in something that uh, has a frac any fraction up there. And even more than that, if you ever have more than a single number or single variable in your exponent, you want to put parentheses around the exponent. So that's the key thing to remember from this, this example. Well, let's take a look at y is equal to square root of x. Now you're going to find that the, um, the interface here, the buttons are very, there's not very much here. Um, there's no shift button, there's no second button access, what's above the buttons, just as clear as can be. I'm uh, here, if you're not uh, back to the Y1, Y2, press your Y1, Y2 button, and I press clear, and we want your square root. Since the square root doesn't appear to be anywhere here, I press the keyboard, and this is where you can find them. And uh, if I go to math, you see there's a square root button here. So if I choose that, notice it puts a square root, puts the beginning parentheses, so I'll put in the X key. And I'll put in a closing parentheses, and then press the EXE. And it changes the square root. And now if we choose graph, that gives us our uh, graph of the square root. Kind of looks like the one we just found, which it should, um, because x to 1 half is a different way of writing the square root of x. Now well, let's look at the cube root of x. I have my resolution set to 800 by 600, so this looks really horrible how I'm writing, but um, it's the resolution that's messing me up. At least I'll blame it on that. Uh, click Y1, Y2. Up arrow, press clear. Of course, this, don't got much on this this right here. We could change that to x to the one third power and plug it in. Um, but if I go to keyboard, um, you got your different options here. And um, if you don't see your options here, then you can uh, choose some of these other ones. So you can just go over to ABC, you can go to CAT, go to 2D, and you look for one that will work for you. Also under Math here, you can choose um, Option and see, see different options there. Bar, Trig, Calc, so forth. Anyway, I'll go back to 2D. The one that looks like it'd probably work is this uh, one with the radical symbol with a black um, black box above it. That implies that uh, we can put in the um, index. That's what that number is called in the slot, that 3. So if I choose that one, and if I put 3 in, do my right arrow key and put an X, and then do EXE, it actually changes the X to the one third. So it's smart enough to do that. And then I push my graph. And that'll give us our graph of that. Now, even though we looked at one of those, I'm going to look at the fourth root. Just to show you one more example. So our index, the number in that slot, is a 4 now. So I come over here, um, press my Y1, Y2 to go back to that focus. Up arrow, clear. And then I'm going to go to um, my keyboard. And I'll use the same one again, such as this one. Put my 4 in, uh, right arrow, and I put my X in. Now, important uh, thing to note here is if you've got more that follows the fourth root, you want to make sure you do a right arrow key to get out of the radical. Right arrow gets you out of whatever you're in. And then I press the XE, and I change the dex to the 1 fourth. Probably very, very good at uh, showing you how to convert a um, uh, something in radical form to a rational exponent, fractional power form. Now press my graph. Looks like the square root, but it's actually a little bit closer down to the down to the x-axis. If I look closely at it. Okay. Let's look at the absolute value of x. 
So press my Y1, Y2 button. Up arrow. Now press clear. Now, again, we don't have much on our display here. The only thing we got is carrot, really. So I go to my keyboard. And uh, the absolute value, I'm looking. I'll see an absolute value here. But under math, if I do the return, see this uh, arrow here? That goes out of the options. You see the absolute value there. Again, options goes here, and this arrow returns. Um, so I want to choose this absolute value. And it puts ABS, beginning parentheses, and then if I put X key, put a closing parentheses, and EXE, change this to an absolute value. Now if I press my graph button, then it gives us our graph. And let's take a look at a fraction. Y is equal to X plus 2 over X minus 3. Now there's two different ways you can enter this in. Um, without using the keyboard option, uh, the trick to it is if you got more than a more than a single number or single variable on top or bottom, you have to put parentheses around that part. Well, we we'll put parentheses on top, parentheses around the bottom. Now, if I just had a single X up here, I wouldn't have to do that. It wouldn't hurt, but we don't have to. Okay, I come over here. Uh, we'll go to Y1, Y2, up arrow, press clear. Then I do my beginning parentheses, x plus 2, closing parentheses, divided by, beginning parentheses, x minus 3, closing parentheses, and then exe, and you see it changes it to even the correct form. Now if I um, press my graph now, then that gives us our graph. Later on we'll take a look at zooming on these. But for now, graph looks something like that right there. As good as I can do freehanding it in 800 by 600 resolution. Another way you could have done that. I press Y1, Y2 to go back. Up arrow. Clear. If I go to my keyboard and then go over my 2D tab, you see there's this one looks like a fraction. Now if I choose that, then it puts that and I do X plus 2. And down arrow probably takes us, yeah, down arrow takes us down, then we put in X minus 3. And then enter or EXE, and then we can do a graph. So again, doesn't matter how you do it, both of them will give you the same thing. Uh, that second way, you don't have to remember to put parentheses around it, it's just automatically in fraction form. Now that's how you handle any fraction on your calculator. I didn't really care what this graph looked like, I was just showing how to handle fractions. Now, let's take a look at, um, I think it's the, the one with negatives. Let's see. Yeah. So let's look at y is equal to dash square root dash x dash 3. Now on your calculator, and all calculators this way, you have two, two buttons. This one down here is a dash. It has parentheses around it. That's our negative. And this one has a dash. This is our minus. In general, if your um, dash is the very first of whatever, it's a negative. So this dash is the very first of our problem, so this would be a negative. This dash is the very first of our square root, so it'll be a negative. If your dash is between two items, like this is between the x and the 3, then this will be a minus. Now you might argue this dash is between the square root and the x, but that goes against our first rule. It says if it's a first and whatever, it's a negative. Now beyond that, we just plug in as we see it. Now some calculators handle these dashes better than others. Let's see how this one does. I don't really know myself. I'll uh, press Y1, Y2. I'm definitely not an expert in the class pad manager. Press clear. And I'll put my negative in first. Now I need my square root. Um, obviously I don't see a square root here, so if I go to my keyboard, let me go over to math and see what's there. Here's our square root. It puts the beginning parentheses for me, which is good. Then I'll put a negative x minus 3, and closing parentheses, and then enter. EXE. Okay, now all the dashes look alike. Um, let's push graph. 
and that's what our graph should look like. Okay, now let's start playing and see what happens with the different dashes. Press Y1, Y2 to go back here, up arrow, and um, if I do my right arrow key and then my left arrow key, I'm trying to put my cursor uh, between the negative and the X. So between negative and the X. I'm going to um, do a backspace. Instead of a negative there, I'm going to put a minus. And let's see if it makes a difference. So again, I put a minus before the X. So I do EXE, and I'll do my graph. Worked fine. Um, the TI inspires that way. It um, doesn't matter which one you put in there. Um, the other Casio I created uh, didn't matter. Okay. Now, let's go back to Y1, Y2. Go up here. Press my right arrow key, and then I'm going to do my left arrow key. And this dash is between the X and the 3. That minus, I'm going to change that to a negative. So I'll do my backspace, and I'll put a negative in there. And do EXE. And now let's graph it. And that didn't matter there. So for this particular one, it doesn't matter. It's smart enough to know, based upon where it's at, uh, what kind you want, which is... Uh, Excellent, actually. It's the first uh, graphing calculator. I've I haven't got my HPs yet. Um, but this is the first one I had where it doesn't matter. It gives you the correct graph. But in general, these are guidelines to follow. And if you do these guidelines, then you'll never, never mess it up. Okay, now let's look at a problem where we kind of merge together some dif different building blocks. So we've got x to the power of x squared minus 3x plus the square root of x. Now remember the um, the trick to this is if you got more than a single number or a single variable in your exponent, put parentheses around it. So I'll put parentheses around that. You could also, instead of doing it that way, use the um, use the uh, keyboard and go to that 2D option. But anyway, I press Y1, Y2, go back here. Up arrow, clear. I'm going to do my X key, caret, and I'll put in a beginning parentheses. Then I want X squared. And so I'm going to do X caret 2 minus 3X plus the square root of X. Now square root is anywhere here, so I'll go to my keyboard. And underneath the math tab, I'll push the square root button. It puts a square root, puts a beginning parentheses. I'll put X, closing parentheses on the square root, closing parentheses on our exponent, and then the XE. And you see it uh, looks correct on the display there. And if I press my graph, it gives me that as my, my graph. Something like that. Now let's say you're wondering, well, what's a, what's a point of this? You know, I like plotting points. Well, plotting points works very well in simple algebra. Maybe you're the best point plotter there was. Everybody else was happy at three points in their T-chart. You had to have nine or ten. So you plotted this many. And we know what that graph looks like. That's the parabola. It goes like this. Or is it? Maybe it's going up like this and then coming down like that. Maybe it's the heart. You just didn't plot enough points. Maybe it's coming up like this and then coming back down over here. Same thing on this side. Maybe it's coming back down over here at x equals 500. You just need to put 500 points in your T-chart before you actually saw uh, what it was doing. Uh, plotting points is the worst way in the world, unless you already know what the graph looks like, which if you know what the graph looks like, then why are you graphing it? Uh, the graphing calculator is a much better method, but it's still not perfect, because my standard viewing window might look like this, so I don't see it coming back down. Now, the leading coefficient test will give us uh, some indications of what's going on, um, and we'll talk about that later on. Uh, but to get the true picture of the graph, uh, you have to take Calc 1 or Business Calc, and there's a whole chapter of how do you find true picture of the graph. Um, for now, we're pretty well in college algebra, we're happy with the standard viewing window. That pretty well gives us what we want. And that's graphing on the uh, ClassPad Manager. Now to exit out of this, you just go press your menu, and I'll take you back, back to here.